Welcome back to the Automation Podcast, the world's number one industrial automation product and technology show. Thanks to you, our audience of highly skilled automation professionals. Thank you for being a member of our audience and thank you for tuning back in this week. Now, for those new to the show, my name is Sean Tierney of Insights and Automation, and each week I invite a new vendor on the show to tell us about their products and technologies. And during their presentation, I play the role of the audience, asking questions I think you have and questions I have as well. Now, given that a quarter of our audience listens, not views, but listens to the show, I'll also try to call attention to any details in the visuals that I think the listen-only audience may want to know about. So with that said, I want to welcome back to the show, Raj, and back for the first time, or here for the first time, Garrett, both from Siemens. Guys, thank you for coming on the show today. I'm excited about the subject matter we're going to talk about. But before we get into that, could you guys introduce yourselves to our audience? Yeah, sure, Sean. First of all, thank you for having us today. We're excited about the time today to talk about our topic. And uh, my name is Garrett Williams. Um, I'm a portfolio development specialist for distributed I.O. for Siemens for the U.S. market. I've been in the industrial automation space for about 25 years. Most of that time has been with Siemens, with a bit of a detour for about three years working for a systems integrator. But lots of experience in the field and excited to talk today about uh, IP65 and 67 I.O. Excellent. We're glad to have you. And Raj, would, I know you've been on the show before, but could you give us an intro to our audience in case they missed that previous episode? Uh, yes. Uh, my name is Raj Rajendra. I'm the product manager for our I.O. systems known as ET200 in Siemens. And I'm also a product manager for our little logic controller called Logo. I've been with Siemens for many years now, and I have had different roles in different countries. Uh, my present role is, uh, as I said before, I'm the product manager for the I.O. systems. Excellent. And guys, I'm excited to learn uh, to talk about, we kind of talked about this in the pre-show, but I'm excited to jump into your presentation. So without further ado, let me turn it back to you and tell us what's new and exciting about these products. All right. Thanks, Sean. Yeah, as you can see today, what, what we're going to talk about is thinking outside of the box, right? And, and when we say the box, what we're referring to is the control cabinet. Um, what we want to talk about today is machine mount I.O. or IP6567 I.O. Why it's becoming even more prominent today and some of the trends we're seeing in the market um, and how Siemens addresses it with our ET200 products um, that are part of the IP6567 offering. So what, uh, what we're going to kind of talk about first, Sean, is, again, I want to talk about why. Why do we want to use machine mount I.O.? Why is it important? Why are we seeing more people using them than ever before? Um, we're also going to talk about some new technologies that, that, that really go right along with that machine mount I.O. offering, and that's going to be I.O. link and multi-field bus. Uh, we'll, go, we'll, do a, we'll do an overview of the Siemens portfolio for um, IP65 and 67. So it's not going to be a deep dive, but it'll be a good overview talking about the positioning uh, of, each of, the, of each of the systems. And that's it. So before I get into specifically you know, the, the IP65, 67 offering, I do want to talk about Siemens I.O. So as Raj said, anytime you hear the term ET200 from Siemens, Think I.O. ET200 is synonymous with I.O. Anytime you see ET200, it could going to be some type of I.O. Now, with Siemens, there's a whole variety of I.O., which I'm going to show you here in a second. But one thing I, I really want to start off with is that just like everything else in our space, right, in industrial automation, especially in the last few years, we've seen rapid change in terms of what we're seeing in the market in terms of new products, new trends, new technologies, and ultimately more automation, which is a really good thing for all of us. And uh, distributed I.O. is no different. Uh, if you look at the distributed I.O. portion of a control system, it is a very significant portion of that control system. Typically, uh, think in terms of a control cabinet, right? If you open up a control cabinet, many times there's more I.O. in there than anything else. So, but those requirements are changing. What we're seeing today as, as demands from companies is they want platforms that are scalable, that means it's a portfolio that whether they have a small application or a very large application, it needs to be a platform that they can scale with. Um, it also needs to be flexible, meaning um, you can combine different versions or different types of I.O. To, to achieve your design goals. It needs to be open. Open in terms of communication is really what we're focusing on here, is looking at, the, at standardization in terms of field buses, looking at standardizations in terms of protocols for, for communication between OT and IT. 
Um, companies are demanding openness, so they're not locked into one or the other. They have flexibility in the openness in terms of communication. And certainly expandable. Um, there, there's more and more types of I.O. that's coming into our automation systems, so, so we need technology that can, that can be expanded to, uh, to achieve the goals of some of these new, new demands um, for our solutions. When we talk about Siemens ET200, again, the broad portfolio of all of our I.O. products, the strength is we have I.O. for any application, uh, whether it be inside of a control cabinet or outside of a control cabinet. What I'm showing here is just kind of a, a mock-up of, of, of a production line, right? This is a bottling line, showing all the different types of I.O. that you might see on a typical application. Um, and this could be really any automation application. Uh, but first, you have, you have your PLCs, right? In our case, it's the S7-1500. It's in a control cabinet. What we're showing here in area one is uh, you know, what you would typically think of as rack mount type I.O. Uh, with our S7-1500 I.O. or ET200 MP I.O. is what it's referred to as. It can also be distributed, but many times it's connected directly to the PLC. So we have that. Then we get into the smaller modular I.O. called our ET200 SP line. This is a compact modular system. It's all, it's again, it's IP20, so it needs to be inside of a cabinet. But this is what you're gonna see in small control cabinets distributed along this line. So we, we see it here in area two, we see it here in area three. Um, this is our SP product. Again, in cabinet IP20 IO. Also for ET200 SP, there's also a distributed controller. So there's a CPU in that ET200 SP form factor that for all intents and purposes is an SF of 1500. It's just in that IO form factor and, and it's used to be distributed along a, produ uh, a production line. So that's everything here on the left-hand side of the screen is in the cabinet IO or IP20. Everything on the right here, and this is what we're seeing a lot more of, and this is gonna be the focus of our discussion today, is machine mount IO or IP6567 IO. In our case, we start with our ET200 AL product line, which this is a modular block type IO system. So it's, it's block IO that's mounted directly on the machine, but it's modular. And when I say modular, what I mean is you have an interface module for where your fuel bus connects, and you have your variety of I.O. modules that connect into that, um, that interface module to, to, to build out a complete ET200 AL system. The other key thing with the ET200 SP is that many applications today, you have I.O. both inside of a control cabinet and outside of a control cabinet. With ET200 AL, you can essentially extend the ET200 SP wrap. So you might have SP I.O. inside of a cabinet, you can extend it with AL modules on the machine, and it's all essentially one PLC or I.O. wrap. So that's, that's an important feature we have with ET200 AL, and we'll talk about that more later on. Also with, uh, with ET200 AL, we offer, um, we offer I.O. link. In fact, for all of our I.O. systems, we have I.O. link, I.O. link masters. Specifically for ET200 AL, we have I.O. link masters. Also, we have I.O. link modules, or, or many times referred to as hubs. That's also available um, in the IO in the uh, ET200 AL form factor, and you see that here in area number six. And what's what's important to note here: this is a, a robot arm, um, because of its small size, lightweight, or, or low payload, the um, the ET200 AL is perfect for 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 moving applications. And next, here in area number seven, what we're highlighting is ET200 Pro. This is a full modular I.O. system. So this is, this is essentially, think of an I.O. wrap. It's not in a cabinet, but it's completely mounted on a machine, just like you see in the picture here. You have this conveyor line, and you have a complete lineup of ET200 Pro mounted here. Um, what's interesting about ET200 Pro is the power um, that it has. Again, it also has a CPU that you can put out in its form factor and a variety of technology modules we'll talk more about here in a few minutes. And the last thing we're going to we'll highlight here is area eight here is called our ET200 Eco PN product. This is standalone block I.O. Um, and this thing's built like a tank. This is probably the most rugged offering that we have. It's IP65, 67, and also 69K rating, which isn't actually highlighted on the slide here. And it's intended for both indoors and outdoors. So for applications that are outdoors, IP, IP65, 67 rated, ET200 Eco PN. A really good fit for that application. So when we talk about scalability and flexibility, you get it with with Somatic ET200 IO um, for every application, in either inside of a cabinet or outside of a cabinet. But our focus today is IP6567, so it's that's outside of the cabinet. So we wanted to start with 
why are we why would you want to use machine.io and also why are we seeing it more today if you look at all the different types of io that are out there so there, there's rack mount io um there's <clears throat> there's uh there's modular io distributed io there's uh, there's both ip20 and ip6567 it's an ip6567 machine mount io that's growing faster than any other area of of, of the io market and the reason why that is is because people want to use, uh, they need to get more data. So and it's not always to get access, it's not always easy to access that data if you're doing everything through a control cabinet. So that's why we're seeing more and more applications where um, they're using machine mount IO. What we're showing here is typically for, uh, for an IP20 application, you see this large control cabinet here. Everything's here, your PLC is here, your, your IO is here, you likely have drives and other things in this control cabinet. Sometimes this can be challenging because you're, you're, uh, you have all the you have additional materials required because of um, the, the control cabinet. Also for all of your uh, your IOs in this control cabinet, so you have longer cable runs that are going out to your sensors and actuators. Um, so that's that's more cost in terms of cable runs, um, and simply it requires more design planning. What you get when you have IP6567, especially in combination with IP20, is you can save money, first of all, because uh, you can reduce the size of that control cabinet. So less real estate also means uh, you know, cost savings in terms of the, 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 the panel. Um, also, because you're putting the I.O. modules right where the actuator or sensor may be, you're, you save a lot of money on, um, on wiring costs. Um, your, your cable runs are much shorter. Also, you have more flexibility this way in some ways because you don't have to plan on how you're going to run, put everything inside of the cabinet and then route to all of your I.O. on the line. You have more flexibility because you can put I.O. in more places when you're putting it out on the machine. So, so bottom line is the advantages with using IP6557 is uh, time and material savings for wiring, also the control cabinet. Uh, it could be reduced uh, effort going into planning. Um, it allows for smaller machine concepts when you're not, using, you're not working with such large panels necessarily, so you can take more of a smaller modular approach. Um, and certainly space saving in, in the cabinet. Also, with the machine mount I.O., it really comes into play in a big way for brownfield situations where maybe you need to do a machine retrofit or a retrofit on a line. Um, so it really makes it easy for, for retrofitting. Um, as an example, we're showing here on the slide, Mr. Customer here has uh, a need to, to, get, to, to pick up data from more sensors. Um, he needs some additional temperature data, some additional quality data. But if you look at his, his, his uh, panel here, it's completely full. So it's like, okay, well, where, you know, how am I going to fit this in? You know, it, it creates a number of design challenges. But the answer can easily be machine mount I.O. because it's much more flexible. You don't need to have it in, in the central control cabinet. You can put it out on the machine right where you need it. You're going to save, you're going to save time and money just like we just discussed because, uh, you know, no control cabinet. You don't have the long cable runs. Um, and, and overall, because it is so easy, it's a lot easier to uh, and quicker to react to needs that you might have that require changes made to a system. So, so these are the big benefits that we're seeing with the machine mount I.O. And it's the reason why we're seeing its growth. Again, this is an area that's growing quicker than any other part uh, of, the, of the I.O. market right now, um, it's simply because companies are looking for more and more data um, in order to optimize their operations. And, uh, and you can get to a lot of that data that, uh, you know, more easily using machine mount I.O. I'll pause there. Any questions on this so far? Another point to emphasize is that the advantage with these uh, machine mount I.O., especially the block I.O., you are not restricted to mounting them in a particular way, like horizontal, vertical, or whatever. It can be mounted in any, any way you like. It can be hanging at, a, I mean, it can be at a 45-degree angle, or it can be vertical, horizontal, it doesn't matter. That's how they are designed. So you can mount them directly on the arm of a robot. The arm can be moving at different angles. It doesn't restrict. Uh, there are no restrictions on that. Garrett? Yeah, really good point, Raj. And you can see that on the screen here. It can be vertical. It can be horizontal. It can be at any angle. It's mounted directly on the machine. And, and these, many times, like in the case of ET200AL, which we'll talk about here in a second, it, along with ECO, these, these are small. These blocks are small. They're lightweight, they're compact, so you can fit them in spaces that uh, maybe you didn't typically think about as far as a, an area that's a mount I.O., but you can certainly do that with this type of I.O. All right. Well, 
what I wanted to show here is just kind of a, just a, a quick overview of all of the IP6567 I.O. that we offer and, and, and how it's some examples of the application and how it's positioned. So when we talk about ET200 AL, uh, this again, this is a uh, this is small, lightweight, plastic enclosed IP6567 block I.O. Uh, we see a lot for material handling and, and assembly applications. Uh, also, special machine building, uh, maybe where you have robot arms or things like that. ET200AL really comes into play there because of its size and, and the ability to, to flexibly mount it to, to, to moving applications. Just like it says here on the system features, um, it, it's especially useful for difficult to reach plant components. Um, some of the unique selling points for the ET200AL um, is, again, when you're looking at, you know, many times you don't, these days, companies aren't just using IO in a cabinet exclusively or exclusively I.O. on the machine, they're using a combination of both. ET200 AL is, is a real good bridge for that because you can use it as a direct connection of ET200 SP. So you could have that control cabinet that has maybe ET200 SP I.O. in it and you can expend, extend that SP rack using the ET200 AL modules. So it really adds more flexibility um, in terms of design and bridges that I.O. from inside the cabinet to outside the cabinet. Next, we have ET200 Pro. This is probably the most feature-rich in terms of functionality and in terms of technology and communication that we have from machine mount I.O. This is a fully modular system. Um, again, think of it as a complete I.O. rack that rather than being inside of a cabinet, it's on the machine. Um, we see a lot of this in the automobile industry, um, also intralogistics, so conveyor technology. Um, and also machine tools is where you see a lot of the ET200 Pro applications. It is, uh, again, a modular system, also a multifunctional system with a very broad portfolio in terms of the offering, which we'll talk about more here in a few minutes. Um, some of the highlights are it has a CPU that comes in, the, in this form factor, which is essentially S7-1500. Also, just like all of our I.O., we offer I.O. Link Master. Uh, it also has technology modules, including modules that are, there's a, there's a motor starter module. So you actually have a motor starter that's in the form factor of I.O. that's out on your line. Also, frequency inverters or drives up to, I believe it's 1.5 kW um, that you can actually put out of the line with the ET200 Pro system. RFID um, fail-safe modules. So you have a standard variant. You also have a fail-safe variant. In fact, all over I.O., you have a fail-safe variant and a standard variant. Um, also pneumatics. So there, there's valve terminal modules also available for ET200 Pro. So again, when we talk about feature-rich and a broad portfolio, you certainly get that with the ET200 Pro lineup. Can I mention this? Uh, with these motor starters and uh, VFTs for the ET200 Pro, you get them in a standard version and a fail-safe version also for them. So that's very important. Yeah, really good Thank point. You. Thanks, Raj. Yeah, and then last on this list is the ET200 Eco PN. Again, this is standalone block I.O. So, and we'll talk about here in more detail here in a few minutes, but the way, one way it's differenti differentiated from ET200 AL, which is also block I.O., is that AL is modular, meaning you have to have an interface module that your fuel, but fuel bus um, connects to, any of I.O. modules coming off an of interface module. With ET200 Eco, it's true standalone block I.O., meaning that that interface module is essentially built into every unit, every block. So there's no interface module required. You have one block, and you connect it directly to your fuel bus. Um, we see ET200 Eco applications pretty much everywhere, um, but certainly the automobile industry, packing machines, machine tool, um, food and beverage, um, Food and beverage also specifically because while ECO is IP65 and 67 rated, it's also 69K rated, which you're going to see in food and beverage applications along with pharmaceutical applications. It's, uh, it's, it's the most rugged I.O. that we offer. Um, this, this thing is built like a tank, um, and for that reason, it can be used both indoors and outdoors. Um, just like we mentioned on the other I.O. systems, you have uh, both a, a fail-safe variant and a standard variant. And just like with all Siemens I.O., you, you mix that I.O. together. It's not, it's not exclusively safe or exclusively standard. You can't both in essentially a single rack. Um, also, it's approved for hazardous locations, um, ATEX-2 for gas and 22 for dust. Um, 
and uh, and again, it's, it's, it has a, a wide temperature specification, so it can be used uh, all the way down to minus 40 degrees C and all the way up to plus 60 degrees C is what the rating is for the ET200 Eco PM product. All right, any questions on, on those three I.O. systems? And we'll go into more detail here in a little bit on all three of these. So we talked about the, 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 the I.O. systems. But there's there's some some new technology that that falls right in line with those systems that really make them an ideal fit for many of the design challenges and and, and solutions that companies are looking for today. One of those is I/O Link, right? So we talked about one of the reasons why we're seeing a lot more machine mount I/O is simply because companies need more data and it's much easier to get to that data where it's at. So that's why you're seeing the machine mount I/O. Uh, for that same reason, I/O Link is really becoming much more prominent. Um, if you're not familiar with IO Link, IO Link is uh, it's not a field bus. It's a point-to-point -point, um, communication protocol that's really intended to get to data um, at that lowest field level. So you get your data and as well as your diagnostics at the lowest field level. Um, IO Link has been around for gosh probably a dozen years. Um, it is an open standard. It's it's governed by PI North America. So PI North America is the same organization that governs uh, ProfiNet and ProfiBus. Um, and uh, because it's an open standard, there's hundreds of, of manufacturers that produce product for IO Link. Um, in the case of Siemens, we make uh, I, we make IO modules that are IO Link masters, along with uh, IO Link modules or hubs. Um, we also have motor control devices that go inside of a, a control cabinet that are also IO Link. So things like um, different types of, of, of relays, uh, motor starters, um, identification uh, RFID. Um, signal columns, things like that, a variety of components that are available on IO Link. Um, the advantages of IO Link, again, you get to that data at the lowest field level. Um, it, you can use both IO Link rated sensors along with standard sensors. So it allows for, for uh, standard um, sensors to be used and come into the system along with IO Link. So, and, and that allows you to use standard sensor cab cabling. So use a standard three core cabling um, in terms of the, the cabling, so it can use what's already out there. Um, it's field bus independent. Again, it's not a field bus, and it's also field bus independent. The IO link system is separate, and you bring it into, uh, into the IO link master, which then interfaces with your field bus. Um, I mentioned a very large number of suppliers, and it's growing every day. Um, and again, because it's an open standard, um, just like uh, ProfiBus or ProfiNet or other field bus manufacturers, um, there's a, there's a, a standard IODD file that comes with every approved IO link device that brings all the standard um, data structure and, and, and parameter set that you get for every single IO link device. Um, very flexible communicate the configuration. So sometimes if you're designing a system, maybe you're not sure exactly how many digital inputs you need or how many digital outputs you need or how many analogs you need. Um, with IO link, that's okay because you, you, the, the I.O. link ports on each of these modules is configurable for whatever type of I.O. you need it to be. So, so it really provides a great deal of flexibility there. And, uh, and also another big uh, plus for I.O. link, and the reason why we see it at a lot of facilities, is the ease of maintenance. Um, everything uh, with I.O. link typically is going to be an M8 or M12 type connector. Um, and it's intended to be, to be used, so if you need to swap out a module, you know, all of the uh, parameterization and configuration is, is, is held at the master level. So if you have a module that needs to be replaced, you, you just swap it out very easily and put it back in, reconfigures itself, and you're ready to go. So from a maintenance standpoint, very easy, which is especially important today because everyone's engineering staff is, is, is slimmer than what it has been in, in, in past years, especially at that maintenance level. So it's all about minimizing downtime, and you can certainly do that with IO. Yeah, Garrett, can I add, with IO-Link, the advantage is like uh, Garrett said, it, it uses a three-wire cable, and uh, you you might think that, okay, three-wire cable, so what? But it brings in a, a bunch of data. If you, For example, if you take a temperature relay, you it doesn't just bring the temperature alone. It brings all kind of values like the alarm points that you can online change them the alarms and events, and it, it's usually if you want to have virus such a system like this, you will need 20 or 30 um, pieces of wires running to that uh, temperature monitoring place, whereas this is one three-wire cable, and it's all done. 
very simple and straightforward. Yeah, it, it, and, and like you said, Raj, it's additional data. It's 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 it's, it's access to data that, that 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 companies haven't had in the past at that level. So and you can use that. You can use that uh, information in an intelligent way to optimize your operations and, and ultimately um, make our systems more productive um, at a lower cost. The other technology that I want to highlight, um, and this is specific to, to Siemens, and that we call it multi-field bus. Um, again, we talked earlier about openness, openness and communication. Um, what we're seeing is many customers, if you go to a, a, a factory, for example, they might have a, a variety of machines that come in from a variety of different uh, vendors. So sometimes those have different control systems on them with different networks, right? Um, or maybe you're an OEM machine builder, and you're shipping your product to to uh, to an end user customer, and uh, and maybe one customer has a standard where maybe they they want their um, their network as Modbus TCP, maybe another one is Ethernet IP. Well, again, because that I/O is a very large portion of that control system, wouldn't it be nice if you didn't have to change out the I/O hardware at all, you, and you could communicate to the to the three primary field buses that we see in the market today, those being Profinet, Ethernet IP, and Modbus TCP. So one piece of hardware will communicate all three and very easily configured uh, within software. Um, this is something that we offer for our ET200AL product, our ET200ECO um, product. Also, going back to what's in cabinet, ET200SP, um, ET200MP, and, uh, and, and then um, even beyond that, with the ET200 Pro, we don't have multi-field bus there right now. But what we do have is we have both Profinet and Ethernet IP communication available on the ET200 Pro. So, so the idea here is we want to make sure companies have flexibility. They have flexibility in terms of open communication, no matter what their standard is. Siemens I/O will work um, in its best in class. All right, Brian, I'll take a break from talking a little bit here. I'll hand off to you to go through some of these use cases. Uh, yes, um, like uh, Garrett said, um, with our um, multi-field bus technology, we are able to support different field bus systems like Ethernet IP or Modbus TCP in with one module. So that means one I/O system that supports both. Why do we do that? First of all, we don't want to be. We want to be. We have created a special business division that's only manages the IO system we 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 don't we we don't care whether it is Siemens PLC we want to supply IO to the industry why is that because some industries prefer particular field bus systems for example modbus tcp is preferred by energy management systems or tunnels uh, here in the us lots of oem might prefer ethernet ip so we wanted to supply IO system that can be configured for anything the customer wants. So in this example here, we have one I/O system that is um, talking to one um, Ethernet IP controller. On the other side, on the right hand side, you see the same I/O block is talking to a Modbus PLC. This is one case in in in, in point. And the next yeah, slide, please. Yeah, yeah go ahead, quick Garrett. comment on that on this one, Raj. So it does say ET or SP up here on the top, but what we're showing here is ET two hundred eco. So we, we should probably change that on this slide. But this is showing ET two hundred eco communicating to, uh, to either a Rockwell processor or, or a Modbus based processor yeah. here. The other case here is what you see is um, uh, the previous case we were showing the um, uh, cabinet based uh, I/O system. And same can be um, done for our machine mount I.O. also with our block I.O.s like ET200 Eco or ET200 AL. You can have them outside of cabinet uh, um, directly mounted on the machine. Same deal here, like um, one block is controlling, uh, is controlled by either a type of controller and another block is controlled by Modbus TCP. So the first case was for IP20 and this, this example is for IP6567 type of IO. Uh, here is another case, um, same thing with our ET200 uh, AL systems. We were telling that ET200 AL can be used with an 
interface module or in this another possibility is that you can you can run it off an ET200 SP station with a bus adapter for that. There is a special bus adapter. You plug it into the cabinet-based I.O. and run the ET cable, ET connection cable, and you can connect your ET200 AL I.O. modules to that. Yeah, so a pic picture of this SP that we're showing here. This is inside of the cabinet. And then and you have the connection coming outside of the cabinet with this these ET200 AL blocks. This is a, is, a, is a more complex system whereby what we are doing is we have three different controllers connecting to one I.O. system, um, in this case a block I.O. system. They all can manage uh, that I.O. block. That is one of the reasons we call it multi-field bus. Multi-field bus in that it can not only um, yeah, do one at a time, it can also, the I.O. systems can manage different field bus systems at the simultaneously on the same wire also. It doesn't matter. Um, what's the advantage to the customer? Yes, you have, a, for example, you have an existing I.O. Uh, plant running with some I.O. and you want to extend your I.O. and also you want to bring in another controller. No problem. It's, it's, it just uh, seamlessly integrates with the existing controllers. The other advantage is that these controllers, there are three controllers, so all of them will have some outputs to manage. For example, let's say Ethernet IP manages some part of the outputs and Modbus uh, controller manages another part of the outputs and um, uh, Profinet controller manages another part of that. But they all can share the value status in that input status of all the inputs and outputs at the same time. That means I can read the output status of the Ethernet IP controllers, uh, uh, the IO managed by the Ethernet IP and the Modbus TCP. And the same is true with them also. Ethernet IP controller can read the status of all the IO points irrespective of who is controlling that. It's called shared device and that's one of the great features that we wanted to um, emphasize here. Yeah, and just to emphasize again, so that's one I.O. device communicating to multiple PCs over multiple networks at the same time over the same cable. So that's, that's true design flexibility there. So it, it, it's called um, uh, shared device and module uh, shared inputs and module shared outputs. That's what we mean when we say you can go and read all the values of the inputs from uh, another controller's uh, I.O. managed by another controller. Uh, the, how do we how do we go about it? I mean, the question becomes: Okay, that's all good, looks so nice, but how do I con um, do, um, configure this I/O station for Ethernet IP or Modbus TCP or Profinet? It's all very easy. We pro supply a tool called Multi Field Bus Configuration Tool, which we abbreviate as MFCT. The MFCT tool is a free download from our service and support website. Anyone can go and download it. And you can configure the station. Uh, let's say you have connected up your module to the um, cable coming out of your <clears throat> module, and you connect your PC to that and run this software, which is not, you don't even have to install that. It is an executable file. And it'll go to the field and detect the uh, I.O. blocks, I.O. stations in, in, the, in, the, in the network and tell you, I, I can find these stations on this network and do you want to configure them? So you will select the station you want to configure and go ahead and select and say, okay, this station has this module and this module and this module. Uh, then you go and one step further and say, okay, those modules are there. What is the field bus it's going to use? You will select and say it's either net IP or Modbus TCP or Profinet. And then also you will parameterize the module saying that this module is a high feature module. It has lots of diagnostics. I want to bring in all these diagnostics into the PLC. You can select that. That's all. After that, you transfer the configuration to the module and the module is ready to be used by the different controllers. 
And for documentation purposes and configuring with third party controllers like uh, uh, Ethernet IP, it will also generate the EDS file that is required to be installed in, in Studio 5000, for example. And also for the ease of the user to understand how is the data structured, we will generate the um, data structure for that called UDT file that you can bring inside um, the Studio 5000 to interpret all the I.O. modules and the channels in the configuration. It's all simple four steps and um, we have several videos in our support pages. You can play that and see. And once you have a module within your hand and you have to configure that, just download the configuration tool and you should be able to set it up very easily. Yeah, that, that's the key word, Roger. It's, it's easy. And as, as Roger, you indicated, well, we have a link here later in the slide that uh, that everyone can take a look at that goes through. There's a step-by-step -step video, step-by-step -step guide that really shows how easy it is to use this configuration tool. And we encourage people to go out and download it. It's a free tool. You can download it and, and see how it works for yourself. Um, so just to, to, again, to kind of go through in a little bit more detail on each of the uh, machine mount I.O. systems. Um, we talked a lot about these, but ET200AL, you, you can see it firsthand here. And this is plastic enclosed, very lightweight, very small. Um, it, uh, it's, it's not directly on the machine, even on moving parts of the machine. It, it fits very well there. Um, it has uh, everything is standardized in terms of color coding and uh, CAD designation. So um, you have a certain color for, for your power, a certain color for, for your uh, field bus connection and another color for your for all I.O. connections. So it makes it very easy. Again, think of it in terms of like maybe that maintenance engineer. Um, you want to make things as simple and as easy as possible so you minimize any complexity in replacing modules out in the field uh, to minimize downtime. You do that with standardization here in terms of the color coding and, and the uniform designation. Um, also, the flexibility, again, this is a good bridge product for going from inside the control cabinet to on the machine because you can connect it directly to ET200SP. Um, you have an IO Link master available in ET200 Eco, also IO Link modules. So even if you're not using the ET200 AL as your IO Link master, you can use any IO Link master, whether it be Siemens or someone else, but you can use these ET200 AL IO Link modules um, in that system. And an IO Link module or hub is used for if you want to bring standard sensors into an IO Link system and you want to, and, and what's existing out there. That's where you're going to use this hub or, or module. So in our case, this all comes in the form factor of ET200AL. Um, you have up to uh, 16 channels, digital channels, um, on a module. And there, there's all different configurations of that. There's, there's also combination modules um, and also configurable I.O. where it can be uh, a digital input or a digital output. You have that available on ET200AL. Um, and... Uh, we already talked about the small footprint, um, high vibration resistance. I believe it's up to, is it 15 Gs, Raj, on the, uh, on the ET200 AL? I think um, something, yes. Yeah, yeah. So, so ET200 AL, again, very small, very lightweight, very flexible in how you use it for your machine mount applications. Um, ET200 Eco PN, this, again, or go back, I'll go back to ET200 AL real quick. Again, this is modular, so you're going to have, you're going to have uh, an interface module for where your fuel bus comes in, and then you're going to have a variety of I.O. modules that come off of that. So this is modular block I.O. The standalone block I.O. is ET200 Eco PN. No interface module. You have this one single block that also has the interface module built into it. These are multi-fuel bus. So you can plug in, you can plug this into Profinet, um, connect it to Profinet, connect it to Ethernet IP, or connect it to Modbus TCP. Same, same hardware for each network. Um, it comes in both a standard variation and a fail-safe variation. Um, this is our most robust and rugged I.O. It's built like a tank. Um, it can be used both indoors and outdoors. IP65, IP67, and IP69K rated. Um, operation from minus 40 degrees C to plus 60 degrees C. And uh, high vibration resistance of up to 20 Gs for the uh, for the ET200 Eco PN. So again, especially for outdoor applications, you know, one of the applications we have is for uh, transportation. So just think of you know if you have uh, 
a large truck or a train or money equipment or something like that. There's a lot of vibration there. This, um, this is the right uh, product for those types of applications. Um, going back to, to performance, again, a lot of openness and flexibility with communication with Profinet, Ethernet IP, and Modbus TCP. Um, also, a broad portfolio that you have, just like all of our I.O., fail-safe variants and standard variants. You can, you can mix them. Um, this is all is the, the N12L modules are all L-coded N12 connections. That means they have a higher current carrying capacity up to 12 amps. And then uh, you can also use this in hazardous locations, so ATEX2 and, and 22. Um, and then also these are, are designed for safe shutdown up to SIL2 level safety. We'll talk about that here in just a second in a little bit more detail. And then the last product that we'll show here, but certainly not least for the machine mount offering, is ET200 Pro. Um, as you can see here in the picture, this is this is true modular I.O. and that it looks just like an I.O. rack inside of a control cabinet, but it's on the machine. It's, it's simple, very fast assembly, large, wide range of, of portfolio for a variety of applications. So you have safety, you have I.O. link masters, uh, motor starters, frequency converters, um, pneumatics, etc all in this form factor. Also CPU. You can get a, a CPU, which is essentially an S7-1500 in the ET200 Pro form factor. All of our I.O., including ET200 Pro, we, we really take pride in the diagnostics, the integrated diagnostics that are built in that come into the engineering system. Also, what you actually see on the device itself. So um, you have very fast fault detection um, through detailed channel granular diagnostics. So diagnostics down to the channel level. Also, very easy signaling on the device itself with all of the, uh, the, the LED displays that you have um, on the module. High availability, again, especially for, you, you got to you want to minimize downtime. So very, so everything is uh, hot swappable. There's an active, active backplane here. So you can, so the modules are hot swappable. Um, so that's going to minimize the downtime if you have a module that needs to be replaced. Um, and also you have a lot of flexibility in terms of connection. We're showing here in this picture, is here on the left you have a, 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 a you have each each port here is single channel connection, but you can also take this uh, this front piece off and snap on a, a new uh, connection module. Um, in this case, what we're showing here is, is is a four port double channel module. So a lot and there's a lot of other you know, modules available there depending on your connection types. A lot of flexibility there in terms of how you connect. And I just mentioned this a second ago. We talk about safety. We have, we have full safety modules available for all of our I.O., but also we have a thing that we call safety-related group disconnect with standard I.O. What this allows you to do is essentially use standard I.O. without a safety controller for up to SIL2 level safety. Basically, once, once a uh, safety, once you're in a safety situation, you can safely shut down all of your standard I.O. using this system. So it gives you a lot of flexibility. Uh, it goes up to SIL2 level, so it's not going to do SIL3, but it gives you a lot of flexibility for what's a, a very common safety application in, in SIL2 level. So so that's important. Yeah, yeah Garrett, and, can I add? A lot sure. of times it is misunderstood that you have to always have a SIL3 level safety. It's a SIL3 level safety application. So if you if you take um, go to a consultant and he might tell you, no, you don't need SIL3 for this application. SIL2 is sufficient. What does that mean? Then you don't need a safety controller because the outputs can be shut down with an external relay with standard modules. That's the advantage using SIL2 level safety. It's only for the outputs, your digital or analog output. They can be shut down in a safe manner at SIL2 level without a safety controller. Get so this, yeah, this is, this is definitely an advantage to have that. So, so thanks for that, Raj. And um, real quick, as we kind of wind things down here, um, what we do want to highlight is what we're trying to emphasize here when we think, think outside of the box with machine mount I.O. It's about making things easy, right? We're, all, we're, we're challenged to get more and more data, but make it as easy as possible. You do that with machine mount I.O. You talk about multi-field bus and I.O. link. Again, making things easier, allowing companies to standardize on how they communicate and allowing flexibility so that the product will adhere to whatever that standard may be. In the theme of making things easy in standardization, we also want to make sure we have options for, for CAD drawings. You know, a lot of times this is something that uh, takes quite a bit of time, but people don't put a lot of thought into it up front in terms of how much time that it does require to do your drawings. 
we offer both AutoCAD and ePlan um, for all of the I.O. that we talked about today. So you can go to the Autodesk website or to the Siemens Industry Online Support website. You can get the uh, the PLC content pack for, for I.O. for all of the, uh, the drawings for AutoCAD. They have also ePlan is available as well. Last thing I have here is uh, just some just some helpful links. Uh, you know, we, we hit on a lot of information pretty quickly today, but uh, all the links that we show here is we have an overview for the entire ET200 portfolio. Again, I/O for every application. We have a website that detail or a site that details multi field bus and how that works, along also with a support documentation website. We talk about those step by step videos, guides, everything you need to know about about multi field bus can all be found on this uh, support documentation website. And then I.O. Link, um, all the, the information on every product that Siemens manufactures for I.O. Link and how I.O. Link fits into the Siemens portfolio can be found on this site. And the last few links here are TIA Selection Tool. For those of you that haven't used this, this is essentially your configuration tool for anything Siemens automation related. This is, this is how you can configure a bill of material. It makes it very easy to, to, to sort out an architecture and, uh, and pick out parts for, for a solution. Um, and the last link here is the multi-field bus configuration tool. Again, we talked about how easy it is. Here's the link for it. We challenge you to go check it out and uh, try it for yourself. So last thing I'll mention here is I.O. Link. Again, this is an open standard. So uh, PI North America governs this. If you want to learn more about I.O. Link, it will be offering several user workshops. These are free of charge, one-day workshops, very informative, very educational. Great place to go to learn more about I.O. Link. The next one's coming up in San Jose, California on March 21st. So for anyone in that area or who's going to be in that area, um, these are great sessions. I highly recommend them. Um, and with that, our contact information is now on the screen. And that, uh, that concludes what we plan to present today, Sean. Well, Garrett and Raj, I want to thank you both for coming on the show and bringing us up to speed on this machine mount I.O., and all the different features and functions that are available, including the multi-field bus, which I think is so cool. And uh, just really want to thank you guys for taking time out of your busy schedule to come on the show and bring us up to speed. Thank you. Well, thank you. Thank we you, appreciate Sean. your time. Well, I hope you enjoyed that episode. I want to thank Garrett and Raj for coming on the show to bring us up to speed on Siemens Machine Mount I.O. And with that, if you did enjoy this episode, please consider giving us a like, a sub, and a share. That is the fuel that keeps this show on the air and coming back week after week. Also, if you want to get in touch or you want to follow me, you can do so over at automation.locals.com. And you'll also find all of my training courses over at the automationschool.com. And with that, I want to wish you all a very happy, safe, and healthy week. And I want to encourage you to stay fearless, stay courageous, and no matter what happens, stay positive. And until next time, my friends, peace.